hey what is up everybody my name is rahul and in this video i'll be talking about five more cyber security projects that you'll find interesting now i've been getting a lot of feedback that those projects are quite simple to make so by those i mean the projects that i have created and are a part of the playlist in which i'll be adding this video as well so they are more beginner centric so what i've done is i have accumulated five more cyber security projects that I think might cater towards the intermediate audience. Now you can follow ahead in this video and I think you'll find it interesting. So let's begin with the first one. The first is static code analysis website. Now you might know that when you approach an assessment it is either through gray, black or white box approach. So what happens in the white box approach is that you are given all the missing pieces that go into forming a bigger picture. So for example, let's consider a website. So in a black box approach, you won't have anything, uh, you won't have access to anything, right? Just the website or the URL. But in a white box approach, there is a bigger chance or a bigger possibility that you'll also be given a source code to it. So when it comes to source code, there are two things that you can do. The first is static code analysis. So what you do in it, you manually go through it or you make use of tools that can highlight some of the vulnerabilities that might have been introduced uh, when the developers were actually writing that code. So you can make use of tools like SEMgrep or Sonar code from the CLI and you can statically uh, analyze the source code to find bugs. But what I'm actually doing here is I'm creating a website that does that. So for example, let's consider this to be our application and it has a logic. So what that logic does is it accepts a source code of any website or any application. It, it has some pre-built or some written rules that it uh, uses to actually compare the source code against that pre-written set of rules. So for example, it could be a vulnerable function that I have written as a rule that if you find this vulnerable function, uh, note it down as a finding and display it to the user. Now what you can do is you can make either write your own set of tools. Now that would be an interesting project on its own, or you can make use of CLI tools like SEMgrep or SonarCube and just pass the web, um, just pass the source code to the application. The application will do its magic because it's running some grep as a CLI um, um, in the back end and then giving you a list of findings. Now this project has already been done. You can go ahead and look it up in GitHub. So in order to just have a feel around how um, this actually works. The second is quite interesting. It is more oriented towards security research which says about bypassing AV signatures. So first of all, let's have some background about how antiviruses work in the first place. Now you'll either have a photo file or a binary or exe file or any file for that matter. You pass it to the antivirus software or application and it does its magic and gives you whether the file is actually vulnerable or not. So how does it do in the first place? So there might be a lot of methods which can be used um, by the antivirus application, but two major ones are signature based and heuristic based. So what I'm telling you here is to bypass signature based mechanisms. So let's take an example. So for example, let's consider an exe that you will be passing to an antivirus software. So an exe might have different um, parts altogether. And what the antivirus software does is it takes a hash of different parts of the file and even the whole file itself. And it compares those hashes against its own database. So first of all, it'll uh, take the database of one of its parts or called the headers or one section of that exe file. It'll find out its hash. It'll compare its hash against its own database. If it finds an error or if, if it finds a match, well, go ahead, it'll flag it as a malicious file. So here is a quite an interesting article that I link in the uh, description of this video. And this tells you about 
an antivirus called Clam, anti Clam Antivirus which is open source so you can go ahead and easily install it in your Linux operating systems or Unix based operating systems and uh, you can learn a lot about how these antiviruses work and how can you actually bypass, this, bypass these so it tells you a lot and I'm definitely sure that you'll like it a lot I've definitely, and I have tried it myself so all the best the third one is open source contribution now I have seen a lot of folks doing it so uh, this has mainly been prevalent in the uh, software industry but here you can also do what you can do is you can also provide your contribution to the tools and you can also make some applications more secure so what can you do just look for github projects on github or any application open source application on github you can search for a project these projects could be security tools or any applications for that matter that are open source you can find bugs fix them and then generate a pull request now this can look really amazing on your resume or even for that matter it can be a great learning experience the fourth one is documenting a malware sample now if you are more catered towards the forensic or DFIR uh, section of um, or you want to get into DFIR or forensics what you can do is you can just have you can just create a sandbox environment download a malware sample and use tools or research based uh, operating systems uh, and document a malware sample now what do I mean by that so first of all you download a malware now you can look it up online I'll just give you a hint that it is there in a github repository if you do not know please uh, um, write a comment in the comment section and I'll uh, point you to that uh, link and you can create a sandbox environment what I mean by that is a virtual environment um, now what you can study is you can look up which API's is this uh, malware making use of um, what are the necessary conditions for this malware to trigger in the first place and what would happen what are the actions or what API's will run if the malware is triggered and what could be the quills what could be the kill switch for a malware now a malware generally what the authors do is they won't make it spread unnecessarily so there should be a or there could be a kill switch for a malware so that it um, it doesn't affect all the computers worldwide or it, there should be something that puts a full stop to it now these are the four things that you can look but uh, I'm sure the list is quite exhaustive so I'm not uh, particularly into DFIR or forensics but definitely you should check this out now some of the necessary tools that you will be needing is PE studio um, process monitors to see what process is it spawning Wireshark if it is uh, you know making use of some calls or using make making use of some protocols uh, fiddler if it is making use of any HTTP requests so fiddler is type of a proxy and you can also make use of Ghidra or I IDA Pro etc now the fifth and the final one which could be quite interesting and quite tough is also network analyzer so what you do is you build a tool that monitors or analyzes the network traffic now I Think that this could be quite complicated so what you could do is you could start by downloading a sample pcap file from the internet or you can also generate one for yourself by downloading my um, wireshark and then you can build a tool that scans the pcap file for potential issues now what can it scan for it can uh, it, it could scan for network packets uh, that could be coming from or coming or making a call to a malicious IP or a domain and it could also be scanning for all the ports in the host machine now one language that you can particularly make use of is python because it's made it's uh, it's used exhaustively so all the best and i hope you find this video helpful if you did please hit that like button thank you